place uh, called Stream Restoration Inc. So if you see that, it's kind of synonymous with the entire group. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about acid mine drainage reclamation and environmental engineering. I'm not going to go real heavy on like the chemistry end of the acid mine drainage stuff because I've been told that you are all experts already, so you don't need any more information about that. And I'll go over just the, you know, what you can expect at the beginning of a career as an environmental engineer. So, like I said, I was going to talk about acid mine drainage and kind of go into depth on that, but I'm not. I'm, I'll instead, I'm going to sub in like my career path and a little bit about my background and you know how I am and where I am and how I got there. Um, we, I will go through some treatment system examples of things that we do at Biomass. Um, kind of run through just a snapshot. I'll spend a, a little bit more time on the McIntyre uh, system, which was the first one that I designed coming out of school. And so it's, it's kind of special to me, and it, it was a really big system too, so they just kind of threw me in. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about active treatment. Uh, we have a Pine Glen, Pine Glen active treatment system. Uh, we typically do a lot more passive, but we can also do active systems, as well as giving you some some snapshots of some other projects that we do that aren't necessarily mine drainage related. Uh, we do some stream bank uh, restabilization. Uh, we did a, a mine fire project for the DEP. And uh, we've also done some work with hydroelectric power and trunks. So if you're at all familiar with those, you'll see a little bit more. Uh, this is my career path, basically. Uh, I started in Pennsylvania. And it actually ended up back in Pennsylvania. And if you follow that line everywhere, you'll, you'll go to Oklahoma a couple times, and you'll come back, and then it makes a swing south, goes to Bolivia, comes back. It's, it's pretty obscure, but I started out, um, I'm from Clarion County, Pennsylvania, and I went to Gannon University for my undergrad, which is in Erie, if, if any of you are familiar with that area at all. And so when I was there, I ended up meeting a guy at a grad fair and so it just goes to show that you never know who you're going to meet or where you're going to meet them, but sometimes they play a really big part in where you go and what you do in life. So, you know, keep your ears and eyes open sometimes because you get some weird connections. But I met a guy at a grad fair in, Oakland, in, in Erie. His brother is a professor at Oklahoma, and I applied to a bunch of schools in the process in Colorado, Montana. I was like, I'm going to go west and do some stuff. And like Oklahoma, I never even really thought about going there, but uh, I called him on the phone and was accepted to some of the other schools and the funding really wasn't there, and I talked to him for a few hours on the phone the first time I met him, and he was like, yeah, I have an assistantship, a uh, grad assistantship, if you want it, you know, he's like, I need to know soon. So I was like, yeah, sure, so, you know, load up the truck, and next thing you know, like, I'm, I'm in Oklahoma. And I actually just came from Oklahoma when I got back at midnight last night because we have a project with him uh, doing some mine water treatment down there. So a typical project, if there is such a thing in what we do, uh, first I'll explain the picture. So the, the top one there is, is Margaret Dunn. And she looks terrified of that water in that <laughs> picture. And, and not a lot scares her, but sometimes you run in some stuff that you just say you're not sure what it is. And uh, the bottom picture is me on one of our old mini excavators digging some test pits. But uh, for a typical project, say, depending on where the funding source is, maybe you have to do a lot of upfront grant work to secure the funding to do it. Um, but typically, then you do a lot of field work up front. Like, say, so you're out there doing water sampling, uh, site inspections, just getting a feel for the entire site. You know, what you have to deal with, what you have to work with, if some other things can help you on that site or not. And then once you have you know, a good amount of information for that, you can go back and work on uh, your conceptual design and kind of lay some different options out that seem to make sense, uh, work on some of the sizing for some things. And uh, once you have a pretty good foundation on you know, what you want to do, you have to go make sure you can actually do that. So we go out and we like to dig test pits because you know, a lot of our components are, are ponds and similar type of things, so we'll go out dig some test pits in the areas that you know we need to get down 10 feet here, can we do that? So we go out, we dig some holes, see if we're making water, which that hole made a lot of water. But, um, you know, just to see what the, what the situation will be. Uh, and then if you're working for maybe the state uh, DEP, 
that typically wants you to do an alternatives analysis. So you'll come up with, you know, what you think works the best. But sometimes what they want isn't always what you think works the best. So you can present some options to them that are, you know, the sort of things that they're looking for. And and usually you make your recommendation based on what you feel will work best for you know the most cost effective price. And as you're doing that, you know, you put costs together for all the systems or all the options for the systems. And it's the sort of value engineering that you kind of are doing on each project that you're doing, showing them that, you know, this one may actually cost a little more, but, you know, you're typically maybe getting a little bit of a better pr uh, product for it and justifying that. And then uh, the final design and the permitting, which is highlighted in red underlined. The permitting is kind of like when it's, it's the bad news in the middle of the sandwich. So like you do a lot of fun things up front, you do a lot of fun things on the back end, and the permitting is that thing in the middle. So like, you know, you call your parents up, like, hey, everything's great, things are going good, you got a record vehicle, but everyone's okay. There's that little bit of bad news in between. That's the permitting usually because it's not fun, but it's part of every project. And you have to, you get used to it, and once you figure out how it's done, it's not so burdensome, but it's definitely there for, for every project. And then you'll go into either construction yourself, which sometimes our company, we're not real typical, sometimes we will do some small stuff in the construction and ourselves. A lot of other places will bid it out. Sometimes we, we bid out sites too when, when we need to. And for those ones, you'll be doing the construction oversight out there, you know, running elevations, checking positions of ponds, helping with site and installs or whatever. And then the final approval of the project, as well as maybe an as-built survey to the GPS just to, to show where everything is after it's built. Uh, so, like I said, I'm going to talk about the McIntyre site, uh, which is Butler County, Pennsylvania, uh, northern Butler County. It's an old surface mine site. And I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time on this one than the others, just because it was the first one I did, and it was a very large site, and it was really nasty quality water that you can trap trick uh, treat passively, but you need you know a pretty good footprint to do that. So the McIntyre uh, passive treatment system was you know the largest discharge in Black Creek and it was the worst discharge in the Slippery Rock uh, Creek watershed. And this shows you some of the, the characteristics of the water. I mean you know, the 2.5 pH versus you know over 300 milligrams per liter iron. It's just some really nasty water. That picture is actually the top pond in it was an old treatment pond from the mining, and that's a riser actually that's coated with low pH iron oxide um, that Margaret was very fascinated with. She was looking at, it. and then Tim walked by and, and like grabbed a hold of the riser, and it all fell apart. <laughs> so, so we have a picture showing it, but we've never seen anything quite like that. And the iron was on the sides of the pond, pretty much like that, but there was active treatment sludge in the bottom. That, we couldn't recover, so we did recover some of the other. So, like I was saying, this, this was a bond forfeiture site where the mining company went out of business and they basically left as is. And they had bond of money on the site, but it wasn't near enough to cover uh, the reclamation of the site. So they backfilled almost the entire top of this hillside with coal refuse at that time because it was. I guess okay to do that they didn't know what kind of problems that would, that, that would cause and as a result every time it rained the water ran through a bunch of coal refuse and generated really nasty water that came out and was treated while they were in business and then once they went out of business it was, it was just a really nasty discharge for like 17 years. The DP did a couple things in between to try to help out. They, they put a waistline cap on, on it in 2006 which helped some, but you were still getting some uh, some water uh, infiltrating through. And they did, uh, and I think they backfilled the old sludge ponds and stuff. And then they also did a terrain conductivity test to try to identify the really hot acidic producing areas on the site. So there was, this project started way before I got there to actually design it. And I think they had like five or six rounds of grant applications to get funding. And they kept getting turned down because they didn't think that it was possible to treat passively, mainly. But eventually, the US EPA funded it through the 319 grant program. And we had to deal with some of the landowner interests on the site where they, they leased the property to a, a, a beagle club, basically, and a, a bird dog club. So you had to make sure that 
the stuff that we were building there wasn't going to you know, cause problems for the, for the uh, dog trials and everything else that had going on. Um, we also did some iron recovery on the site, which this is that first pond again. And they basically dewatered the pond, and then we had some summer interns that are from the top picture there. They we gave them some shovels, turned them loose, and said, fill these, you know, 2,000 pound sacks up, and you know, and we'll go from there. So they, they did a pretty good job. They, they recovered as much of the iron off the side of the pond as, as they could within reason. And uh, I think they had a lot of fun doing it, maybe. But, uh, so this is just a snapshot of the design plan. Uh, basically, like, that top, there is no pointer. But the top pond was an existing pond, and then we built a channel down through to an auto flusher that went into a settling pond, which was just above the road. Then it went to a vertical flow pond below the road and through like a three-stage wetland that's about a two-acre wetland total. And then there's two manganese removal horizontal flow beds at the end. And then in the bottom pond was also a pond left by the mining. It was just a sand pond they left there. And it was really nasty quality water when they left, but currently like it has fish back in it now. And so you can definitely see the improvement. And the design was for a 25-year uh, life. So I'm going to show some pictures of the components, basically. This is the channel that goes from the discharge. It's called an oxidation precipitation channel, is what we, we term them. Other people call them different things. But uh, basically, it looks like a road. It's you know, covered in limestone. And you get the flow to spread out as it comes down through there. And you get the low pH iron removal as it happens. And it's kind of a self-leveling process that, uh, you know, like the landowner was like, why are you putting in a channel that's 30 feet wide? He's like, you can run all this water through like a three inch pipe. And we're like, yeah, but like it'll spread out over time and it'll gradually just form like an iron patty and kind of self level. And, you'll get, and we get a tremendous amount of iron removal in this component. Uh, the auto flushing verb flow foam picture here, uh, we have a few pictures uh, on it, and we actually retrofitted, well, we designed it into this one, but there's a solar actuated valve in this pond that we have programmed to open once a day so that in low flow periods the pond will still drain daily so it doesn't have a chance to sit there and get aluminum solids or iron solids plugging up the uh, the bed. And with the main function in it, which there's a picture, the lower right one, I'm down in the siphon vault there and installing the siphon itself, so like we had to do all the plumbing in there, get it all set up, but it basically, as the pond builds up, it you know, triggers the siphon to come on, so you're using a known volume of limestone in the pond, and it'll flush, flush that volume out of the pulses, basically, uh, to get the pH up to about a five, which at this site, like if you get pH over four and a half, the aluminum starts to come out and precipitate, so that's kind of the target, you just wanna get the, the pH up over four and a half, up around five, and, get most of your aluminum now. Uh, the next component was the settling pond, which is pretty cut and dry to I me. Mean, this one had a little bit of issues when they built it because we were on an old strip mine, so it was in unconsolidated soils and it leaked like a sieve for a while. But they got in there and they lined it with uh, Harsco Mineral CSA, which is the gray stuff you can see in the photos. And, uh, and then eventually, once we got the pond to hold water, we installed it baffle curtain, the directional baffle, so the water will flow the whole way out around the pit and come back to the outlet because just the way the pond is located, it's a long narrow pond and the outlet is right next to the inlet, so we had to go with the directional baffle there to get the, the residence time where we wanted it. And, you know, it, it's designed to store solids for the design. And also, we included, there was some other little discharges around so we brought them in at this part of the component so we get treated below the road too. So, you know, it may not be the perfect way to do it, but we'll definitely get it in. It doesn't get into the audit flusher, but we brought it into the system as high up as we could to get as much treatment as possible. Uh, so the, the Jennings pond or vertical flow pond or bioreactor, there's several names for these, but they're basically spent mushroom compost, wood chips, and limestone mixed together put into a pond, and there's an underdrain system, so the water flows down vertically through the pond and out of the underdrain structure, which the four little riser pipes next to the big one are the underdrain. And at this site, 
we put in the bottom picture, which is like a surface by bypass, basically. So when the people were having their, their dog trials, and they didn't want the, the pond to stink because it produces hydrogen sulfide gas during the process, you can literally just pull the, the, the small four risers up really high, and the water will come out if you have the big one lower, the water will all come out the surface and just bypass treatment while they're while they're doing their thing and it avoids the smell issue quite as much. And but this one, you know, alkalinity coming out of it's usually somewhere in the hundred milligrams per liter ballpark. And then wetlands, it's basically it was a large two acre wetland that we had lots of drop there, so we could be a little bit creative with it. We put in a pool on the inlet end. And then we had some directional baffles as we went through. We had a step down place to get some aeration in. And then we had a, an intermediate tier. And then another step down and comes back out. And there, and there was a uh, outlet pool on the end as well. So it's, it's kind of just a basic wetland design. But it, it's designed for storage of iron solids. And you know habitat comes in naturally to one of those uh, critters and animals that enjoy the wetland work. And then the horizontal flow beds, which are basically, they're, they're a pond full of limestone, but we dig inlet pools and outlet pools on both ends so that the water can actually enter on one of the leading faces of the stone to go through so it doesn't just form a, a lens on the top 